Hey, what's up guys, Guardian here, coming you guys with a deck profile update on my Hexrob deck. So, uh, yeah, it's been a little while for Hexrob on the channel. Um, it's got some uh, support cards from set 6, it got a new promo card, and it just got a new support card in the form of the Gradle Order, which uh, gives it more consistency with its Persona Rides, which is uh, pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, a long overdue Hexrob update, I think, so uh, let's get into it, and I'll show you guys what I'm playing. So to start with, we have the ride line, of course. We are playing the typical suspects here of Triconnect Sorceress, the t Score Sorceress, the Pentagleam Sorceress, and the Hexrob Sorceress. So uh, yeah, usual stuff. Um, Pentagleam is going to ride in your t Square to Counter Blast and then draw a card. And then when you ride your Hexrob on your Pentagleam, you're going to then rearrange the top three cards of your deck, which is nice to create a stack, see what's coming up, and... Uh, yeah, Hexrob, of course, when you reveal a trigger, um, you can give one of your rear guards a 10k power. So, uh, yeah, pretty simple stuff. Just the usual Hexrob ride line that we all know and love. And then for the grade 3s here, for the main deck, we, of course, have our three extra copies of Hexrob Sorceress, since we do need her for the Persona riding, of course. Um, so when you Persona ride, you can Counter Blast and Soul Blast to uh, put a crit or a front on the top of your deck, and then she gets a Drive Check. Uh, now, you don't have to put a trigger on top of the deck. Um, you can just get the drive check and get a plus, which can sometimes come up, um, depending on how aggressive you want to be that turn. Uh, but you can just do it for the plus to then build hand size, to then maybe survive the next follow-up turn of your opponent. So that's up to you there. Um, but yeah, of course, with the Hexrob as well, we have the brand new Griddle Order, which gives us another copy of Persona Ride in the main deck, which is pretty nice. So... Uh, yeah, as long as you're seeing uh, one of these cards uh, for your turn four, uh, you are looking good. So then you can set up the Persona Ride power with the Hexrob skill uh, for your turn four. All right, so for the Grid 2s, we have uh, one of the coolest support cards that Hexrob got in the form of Octary Sorceress. So with her, basically when you uh, place her on rear, you can Counter Blast the one as long as you've got a Grid 3 Sorceress Vanguard. You uh, look at the top two cards you have a deck, and then you can choose up to two of those cards to add to your hand. And then you put the rest of the cards on top or bottom of your deck. And then if you chose to add both of those cards to your hand that you looked at, um, you have to put a card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. So, yeah. Uh, either way, you're going to be getting a plus from this card, which is really, really nice. Um, and then in the worst case scenario, I suppose it's just a stacking card if you decide to put both the cards on top of the deck. But... Yeah, usually with this, um, when I'm riding the Hexrob Sorceress on top of the uh, Pentagleam on my turn 3, uh, it gives me a way to see what's coming up. And then sometimes the Octary can help me, you know, draw in some pieces that I see from the top 3, or maybe get further down towards a trigger, or something like that. Uh, a really funny interaction, actually, which came up in a tournament once, was um, I actually had the Over Trigger in my hand, um, and I actually put that to the bottom of the deck um, when I drew the two cards. Um, and then I was able to shuffle the deck um, with my uh, Torturous, the Grid 1 Searcher, uh, wherever she is. I'm trying to find her here. Yeah, I used a Torturous to then shuffle my deck because I obviously searched for a Hexrob to then shuffle. Um, but because I shuffled the deck, it actually allowed me to manipulate enough to where I saw the over from the triple drive check of Hexrob. And... Uh, yeah, it won't be the game. So, uh, yeah, a funny interaction there that can come up with this card, just because you can put a card back into the deck, and putting the over back does feel good. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, better than drawing it. Um, there is one other small thing with this card, in that it gets 5k power, as long as you Persona Rod that turn. Uh, it does say when it attacks a Vanguard, but I believe it did get a Ratted, so it's uh, when it attacks anything. Uh, so if you want to attack a Regard, maybe the numbers matter there, but... I'll be honest, more times than not, I'm attacking a Vanguard anyway, so it's whatever, but yeah, something to take note of there. Uh, but that 5k power does actually matter when it comes to making your magic numbers and uh, having a, a good attack pattern uh, when it comes to your turn 4. So uh, yeah, Octara is an amazing support card, uh, definitely a great addition to the deck overall. So, uh, next we have the next Grid 2, which also came out in set 6, which is four copies of Kodrakas Sorceress. So, this card is amazing. Uh, basically, when it's placed, you look at the top two, uh, you put, you rearrange them, and then you Soul Charge one. 
Um, now, the great thing with this is that it says when it's placed, if you have a Sorceress Vanguard, which means it works on your Grade 2 turn because Pentagleam, of course, is a Sorceress. So, uh, yeah, it actually gives you some sort of an incentive to have an early game, uh, which is nice since you don't necessarily need the Counter Blast on your turn 3 for Hexrob since you're not going to be using the Persona Ride skill, obviously, um, until your next turn. And then you have the power increase, which obviously doesn't require resources. It just requires you to reveal triggers. So uh, you can argue that maybe it might damage a die for your um, Octary, which can come up. Uh, but also do remember we have cards in the deck like our Allwin, which can come down in turn three for us to potentially re-stack uh, the deck in case the top three with uh, the Pentagleam wasn't good enough. So uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, this card's great because it's uh, soul charging. Um, the deck is, you know, definitely known for soul blasting a lot. And um, yeah, it's great to have a resource card in the form of a stacker as well, which is nice. So uh, yeah, four copies of the Quadracast Sorceress as well. Uh, nice to have some early game with that also. Uh, next grade two we have is uh, the promo card. Now, don't worry too much about this. Um, I will have a list in the description, uh, well, a deck log. Um, of an alternative build that you can play if you don't have the promo. Uh, basically, there was a grade one, I believe, in set one. I think it was called uh, La Cheetah, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, basically, it's a grade one, uh, 8k power, where if you reveal a trigger from the drive check, you can still blast two to counter charge one. So it's actually somewhat similar to this, but obviously this has a few more benefits to it um, in comparison. Um, so this is a grade two, first of all. So the Fichita is actually different, you know, in terms of its aspect than that it can boost. Um, but with this, it's a grade two, and it has to be in the front or a regard circle. Um, but if it's chosen by your grade two or grade of Vanguard with sources and the card name, you can Soul Blast two and then Counter Charge one. So pretty nice. And then also, if this unit's power is increased or decreased uh, by a trigger effect this turn, you can draw a card. So perfect world is that you get a trigger, you... Uh, give the effects of the trigger to this, you then use Hexrob's ability to then give her her power as well, and then that will activate her to then give you the counter charge for Soul Blast of 2, and also you can then get a draw card because you gave her trigger power that turn as well. So yeah, it's another form of plussing in the deck, um, which is nice to go with our Octary, so we have even more plussing potential now, which is fantastic. Um, but also just the ability to get that counter charge is also really nice. Um, Soul Blast 2 does sound heavy, um, but honestly, as long as you're able to balance the soul well and, you know, use your uh, uh, your Kodrakast Sorceresses, then you shouldn't be too bad uh, when it comes to your soul overall. So, uh, yeah. So I decided to go for three of this uh, just because I was testing two and it didn't feel like it was coming up enough uh, for me to benefit from it. But I do think four is a little bit too much for this card since you're only really going to be using it like once or twice in the game. Uh, twice is a little bit of a stretch if I'm honest, but... At least once is fine, um, I think. So three copies is absolutely fine with me, I believe. Um, and then another three of that we're playing is three copies of Olwyn, uh, good old Olwyn from set two. Um, this card's always been great, just because it's when it's placed, if you have Hexrob sources of your Vanguard, you can still blast one. Uh, look at two cards from the top of your deck and then put them to the top of the bottom in any order. Uh, yeah, it's just a really good stack skill. Um, and also, it does have that uh, skill of when you reveal a trigger from the drive check, uh, you can counter blast and give it 10k. Uh, that is not once per turn. So if you have excess counter blast and maybe at like the late stage of the game, uh, that skill can actually come up sometimes to where the extra 10k can push you a little bit further uh, to maybe sealing out the game and going for uh, that final push. So uh, do bear that in mind. But yeah, this can be used from your turn three onwards. So even if you're not able to use the Octary skill uh, for the Counter Blast, maybe you got damage denied because the opponent attacked maybe your grid to uh, Quadracast Sorceress or something. Uh, you can use this instead. So that's also fine. So uh, yeah, a good stacks card overall for the deck. So a nice three of as well. And then the final grade two of the deck is going to be the two copies of Nanafall. Um, I quite like this in the deck. Um, Honestly, it's kind of a flex slot uh, since it doesn't come up too often. Um, but I would pre prefer having this in the deck than not, just because it gives us that uh, additional outlet for a soul charge. Um, so basically, when your drive check reveals a trigger, you can put a card from your hand into the soul to then draw a card. So if you have pieces in your hand that you don't need anymore, then this is an opportunity for you to put those cards into the soul uh, for a soul charge, and then you draw a card anyway, so you don't lose out in anything. 
Um, but yeah, maybe you don't need the extra copies of your four side glow sorceress. So then what you can do is you can then draw, uh, put this into the soul and then draw a card. So you at least get the benefit of that additional soul charge, which can be pretty uh, crucial at times. So uh, yeah, I think two of this is fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's more of the flex sort of the deck. So if there's anything else you can think of playing over this, um, do experiment with it. But I would prefer having this in the deck than not, like I said. Uh, just because of the amount of soul blasting that goes on in this sometimes. Uh, grade ones. Uh, grade ones is pretty short and sweet. We have the four copies of Lalarita, which is our multi attacker of the deck. Um, so when you uh, reveal a trigger at the end of the battle, that your drive check revealed a trigger unit. Uh, if your Vanguard is Hexwell or Sorceress, you can counter blast soul blast, choose one of your other rear guards and stand it, and then retire this unit. So yeah, it's your multi-attacker. Um, great thing with this is that with your Octoris Sorceress, for example, um, with this getting the 5k power, uh, you could say attack with this, um, with a boost from this, uh, making it 33, which is a pretty awkward number to guard. And then at the end of that battle that your uh, Vanguard attacked from getting the trigger, uh, you can then stand this back up. So it gives you that fourth attack uh, for you to work with. Um, I decided to go for four of these um, because... Yeah, I do think it's kind of crucial to see for the turn four, uh, just so that you can keep the pressure up. Um, and also, we we kind of got the wiggle room to do this now uh, because of the new order card with the Persona Ride uh, capability. And I'll explain that as we go over the next grade one, which is just two copies of Totrus. So I was playing this at three before, um, but yeah, I cut one of them out for the Persona Ride order, basically. Uh, just because, yeah, this basically does the same thing, right? So we have the three Hexorb and the one Order, and then we have two of this. So we have six outlets to get to a Persona Ride, which is pretty good, I think. And especially with your Octorea, uh, being able to uh, draw cards from the deck now and dig through your pieces, um, it's pretty consistent overall. So I do think uh, two of this is perfectly fine. Um, I haven't had any issues, but uh, yeah. Um, one thing I will say about the Grade 1s as well is that it's nice to have the boosters available. Uh, for when you need them, because you can carry over that power um, from the Hexrob skill if you're boosting the Vanguard, since you can give Hexrob's uh, power um, to the booster of Hexrob, and then that'll carry on over to your Vanguard. So it makes the Vanguard attack a bit more awkward to deal with. Um, but yeah, the boosters are just nice because they help make your columns just that little bit harder to guard. And uh, yeah, I think two of the Tortress has been perfectly fine, uh, thanks to the addition of the Persona Ride order. Uh, next grade one is, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty simple. We have the one Blitz Order and the three regular PG. Just a uh, pretty simple, straight, standard stuff that we uh, can come to expect in these types of decks. And then we have the triggers, which, of course, we have our Over Trigger, which is uh, nutty in this deck because, of course, we benefit even more so uh, with the drive checks on the rear guard since we can give the 10k power uh, from Hexwob skill as well, so we can get a really big high roll there. So of course we're playing one copy of that. And then for the other triggers, we are doing four copies of the skill crit and four copies of a vanilla crit. Um, yeah, I decided to go all out crits in this deck just because I feel like our power is fairly good. You know, it's fairly decent. Uh, we can hit pretty large numbers, especially with Hexwob's ability. Um, now you can play fronts if you wanted to, um, but honestly, I've just felt more comfortable with crits in this deck, um, just to have that closing potential. And, uh, yeah, instead I'm going with some draw triggers just so we can get to our pieces and help refill the board since, you know, going against, uh, against any sort of control or retire matchup is a little bit annoying. So it's nice to have the draws there to sort of help recuperate those losses. And then the final card of the deck is, of course, our four heal trigger, which, like I always like to say, if you want to play any of the skill heals as well, do feel free to do that. Um, I always just go for the vanilla ones anyway for the profiles. So, uh, yep, heals, heals, help keep you in the game. And uh, they're nice to see. And uh, it's nice to have the artwork as well to go with the, the hex rob deck. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for the Hexrob deck. Uh, it's pretty cool overall um, that we're still getting some support for this deck. Um, I mean, to say the new order card is, uh, you know, pretty much an extra copy of Hexrob uh, to help secure that Persona ride. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they take this deck any further in the future. Um, one thing I'm kind of thinking about is they might make a new Sorceress unit because... Uh, when I look over Octoris Sorceress and, you know, as long as you've got a Sorceress Vanguard, maybe they could do an upgraded Hexrob, but 
I don't know how I'd feel about that because it means like cards where they mention Hexwarp specifically, uh, like the Lala Rita, um, those wouldn't be able to get utilized unless their names, you know, state as Hexwarp Sorceress. But we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, we need to uh, acknowledge Hexwarp a little bit more, I think, um, in order for Bushiro to actually take this deck to places. Um, but yeah, Hexwarp is just a fun deck. Honestly, it's really fun. It's nice to stack the deck. You know, it's nice to see the over trigger and just, you know, go brr with drive checks on the rear guard, get tons of power and go crazy. And uh, yeah, the support that Hexwarp does have, it's uh, it feels good. And I feel like the deck's in a nice position. Um, but competitively speaking, it's sort of like a rogue tier anyway. But uh, yeah, it's a fun deck. Um, but yeah, I will uh, put a deck log of the deck in the description, as well as a version of the deck that does not have the promo card in it, in case you don't, uh, you're, you're not able to get them. Um, but yeah, the next video will most likely be MLB at this point. I'm just waiting for one more thing to arrive in the mail for that, so do look forward to that soon. And yeah, that's going to do it for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. So like always, this is Guardian205, signing out.